I'm not a doctor. I'm not a researcher. I am by nature an inquisitive person. Um, when my daughter Guinevere was diagnosed with uh, infantile spasms, which is a form of intractable epilepsy at three months, um, I felt I had no other choice but to learn as much as I could about uh, epilepsy so that I could intelligently communicate with uh, her doctors and spent a lot of time looking into different treatments um, and while she was failing treatments. Um, I was not looking for cannabis. I was just looking to educate myself um, so I could advocate for her better. Along uh, that path, I came across cannabis as a possible therapy. And we spent the next uh, almost two years trying nine different uh, traditional therapies uh, and failing each one. She was having uh, subclinical seizures almost constantly. And at two years old, she was basically stuck at three months old developmentally in a vegetative state. And uh, we, didn't know, we didn't know where to go. So I decided to push to try medical marijuana. Um, finally found a doctor who would support us in that. And got a prescription, and we began her on medical cannabis last November, and she has not had a seizure since, and she is now walking, being really bad, <laughs> and uh, doing some other kind of normal stuff, so. Um, obviously, I'm a, an advocate, I, I've seen a, a enormously trans like life-changing transformation uh, from where she was a year ago to today and uh, I share everyone else's vision that um, more research is needed because even though we were able to convince a doctor to give us a prescription for our then two-year-old daughter he was unable to provide us with any dosing guidelines or um, any other kind of support other than the actual prescription. Uh, so that was kind of up to us to Google and research and find out, which there is lots of information available. And, you know, through some trial and error, we, we came to a, a dose that seems to have worked. Uh, but it shouldn't really be like that. Because <laughs> I'm not a doctor. There's Gwen there. She's at home, hopefully having a snack right now. Um, that's basically her story, and I'm not here to really speak about her specifically, but I figured I'd give you a quick uh, introduction. That's at the top an EEG about 14 months ago before going on cannabis, and at the bottom it's an EEG from last January after being on cannabis for five weeks. Uh, it's pretty clear that uh, the bottom one is better. So um, I have actually worked within the MMPR system a little bit in the past uh, 18 months. So I have uh, a lot of insights uh, as to what's going on, what's changed, and, and I think what's coming, which I'd like to share with you. Um, so the MMPR, the medical marijuana, Mar marijuana for medical purposes, uh, was brought in into two, 2014. Um, any doctor can write a prescription, as Dr. McCoy has, has said. Whether a doctor will is up to their discretion. There are numerous specialized clinics uh, that have come about in the past year uh, that are more likely to write prescriptions for people than maybe some normal family doctors or specialists. Um, once you have a prescription, you purchase it from an uh, authorized producer, a licensed producer. And until recently, in June, it was illegal to turn it into anything other than a smokable dried flower form. Uh, we were, of course, doing that anyways. Um, and I did not go to jail. But <laughs> as of June, it, uh, there was a Supreme Court ruling that has made it legal. And uh, now no one has to go to jail. So those are the recent changes, um, and what that means is that 
all of these licensed producers will, in the near future, begin to supply oils, uh, capsules, pills, etc. So whereas we've been taking the dried flour, processing it into an oil, sending it to a secondary lab for testing, uh, so we know exactly how many milligrams of active ingredients are in it, and then dosing her appropriately, soon you will be able to simply purchase the final product with the knowledge that there are X amount of milligrams per milliliter in a capsule or a oil or a pill. The production regulations in the MMPR, which I am a fan of personally, are very strict. Um, it allows you to get standardized product that you know exactly how much cannabidiol, THC, et cetera, is in. Um, and these, these facilities are governed much like uh, FDA controlled and, um, and, and other pharmaceuticals. Uh, the plants are grown in a sterile environment. You can't go near any of the plants without being in a sterile suit. So the medicine is, is very clean and tested for any kind of contaminants before you can get it. So how does the MMPR impact epilepsy patients and, and their families? It basically allows you to access this medicine, uh, hopefully soon with research behind it, um, as a novel therapy that you know many have seen very effective. So what do we need to know about purity, concentrations, et cetera? That's a loaded question. Uh, one that hopefully the, the doctors and, and researchers will soon answer. Uh, for now, we as patients and parents are left to figure that out for ourselves, <laughs> which is uh, a little bit uncomfortable, but uh, there is an easy way to start very, very low, uh, titrate up very slowly, and hopefully stop when you see a beneficial effect, uh, at which point you may have found the right dose. Uh, so what the future holds, we don't know. Uh, with the new government, uh, big changes may be afoot. We don't, we don't know what that will uh, look like. But what we do know is that very soon you will be able to buy standardized medicine in, in ingestible forms, whether it be oil, capsules, et cetera, eliminating the need for patients to process it yourself. And likely allowing doctors to become more comfortable with uh, prescribing cannabis because they're able to now prescribe it in dosed formats that they're familiar with, uh, like any other medication. We know that cannabis has the potential to help epilepsy, among other things. Um, we know that the MMPR now allows us access to standard uh, medicine and soon standard dosing. And what we need is more research, more education uh, that will bring the dosing standards forward. And uh, all of this will lead to better treatment, better understanding, and better access for everyone. And that's pretty much what I have to say. <laughs>